Hi everyone, my name is Julia Tong and I'm a physical therapist at Breakthrough. I'm here today with a total body strength workout for swimmers. So this is a nice dry land workout, it's going to be about 40 minutes and it'll include your warm up and then we'll have a total body strength section which you can do with or without weights depending on what you have available um, in your house. And there's going to be a shoulder burnout round at the end followed by a cool down and stretch. So turn on your music, let's get started. So we're just going to start up our warm up here, we're starting with some shoulder rolls, so shoulder rolls back, shoulder roll forward, and you can also kind of move your feet here, I just like to get my whole body moving, you can do some marches, you can do some butt kickers, so heel towards the butt, just get a nice range motion, loosen up those shoulders. We use our shoulders a lot in swimming. We're going to use them today, and so it's important to get them warmed up. Next one is a high knee march, torso twist. So you bring your opposite elbow towards your opposite knee. Keep your back nice and tall. You don't want to slump over, like no crunching here. Nice and tall. Use those ab muscles to bring your elbow towards your opposite knee. Warming up the abs and obliques here. one is a walk down a plank. So legs, knees mostly straight, not locked out. Walk down to a strong plank position. Walk back up. Squeeze the glutes and hamstrings to stand up. This is a core warm-up as well as a shoulder warm-up. Use those core muscles to get into that nice strong plank position. Okay, the next one we're coming down to the ground. Your Superman. Arms up above. Raise your arms and legs off the ground. We're gonna warm up those back muscles. Warm up your shoulder muscles. Keep your shoulders away from your ears. If you can, you can even kind of slide your shoulders when it's down your back. Okay, next one, back up for a squat to arm circle. So squat down, do a nice arm circle as you come up. Arm circle the other way. Push your legs back in the squat. You push your hips back in your squat. And then do a nice arm circle as you come up. Getting those legs ready. We got one more interval after this. We're just going to do jumping jacks. For low impact, you can do side step jacks or the full jumping jack. This is our last warm up exercise. Then we'll start up the workout. Trying to get that heart rate up a little bit. We can get ready for the strength portion here. down. Hopefully you're all ready to go. So let's get into the strength portion. Okay, so for this total body strength portion, we have five groups of two exercises each. There's going to be one lower body exercise and one upper body exercise. We'll go 45 seconds on, 15 seconds break in an ABAB pattern, so two times through each group. So you can use weights for these, or you can also do these without body weight. It'll be a little bit less challenging. Um, there's lots of things around your house you can use as weights, like water bottles, sacks of flour, a bunch of books in a bag, um, small child, pet, whatever you have available. So go ahead and grab your weights and let's get this started. The first group of exercises is going to be squats and reverse flies. So we'll grab your weights here, hinge those hips back in a squat, and then control down, control up. So inhale, exhale up. You can do this without weight. If you prefer having the weights down lower, that works as well. If you just have one weight, like if you're using books in a bag, you can kind of rack the weight up in front of you, hold it right in front of your chest. I just prefer to keep the weights racked up here. Slight differences um, when you change where you're holding the weight, but 
Overall, it's still a squat. So go ahead and put those down. We got our transition to reverse flies. I'm gonna go super light on this, just five pounds. You could do this with body weight, definitely. So hinge over the hips, raise your arms out to shoulder level. Keep those shoulders away from your ears. Make sure your back is flat. Don't let your back round here. Keep it nice and flat, core engaged. This is really important for that shoulder stability. If you find yourself swinging the weights up, it's too heavy. So go body weight or super light. You want to slide your shoulder blades together on your back and palms facing down. Get that reverse fly. Okay, and then we'll go back to the squat. Side. So again, you can also do this body weight. I'm just using 20 pounds in each hand here. So use what you have. Show you from the side this time. Hinge the hips back into the squat. Knees and feet shoulder width apart. Keep your weight in your heels. Squish a bug underneath your heels. And you want your chest angle and your shin angle to be about the same. So you don't want your chest collapsing too far down towards the ground. Chest up, push those hips back. This is really important for that leg drive for your flip turns, open turns, dives. Anytime you push off. All right. We just have one more set of those reverse flies. Then we're done with this group. So grab those weights. Shake it out a little bit. Hinge of the hips and start it up. So you should be using a weight that's light enough for you to keep your arms pretty much straight, just barely short of locked out, and raise those weights up to shoulder height. So five pounds for me is plenty. So you can go super light on this one. Keep that core engaged, regular breathing. Those back muscles and those shoulder stabilization muscles are really important for swimmers to keep you free of injuries and improve your power through the water. All right. So that's the end of group one. Group two is going to be RDLs and chest flies. Ground the weights of your RDLs, hinge your hips back. Knees are straight but soft. You're just coming as far down as you can while keeping your back flat. Again, really important, you don't want to slump the back here. So I'm just using 20 pounds for this again, about the same as the squats. You can also hold one weight between your hands or do it body weight, increase the speed a little bit and you'll still get a great workout. Push the hips back, weight in the heels. All right, so the next one is going to be a chest fly. So again, if you're using a long lever, your arms are really long, so you can go really light on this weight. Using just five pounds here. And you can always increase the weight on the second set if this is too easy. I think this might be a little easy for me, but you want to make sure that you're controlling it. Don't just let your arm fall down to the ground. Control down. Keep that elbow almost straight. Almost all the way straight. And just get to where your hands are hovering over the ground, not quite touching. Keep that steady, even breathing. Don't let your shoulder pop forward. You want to keep it under control. Alright, 
going back to those RDLs. So get your stance ready here, feet shoulder width apart, hips back. Pretend like something is hitting you in the hips and just kind of pushing your hips back. So you're just folding in half. Keep your shoulders back because you don't want your shoulders to slump forward. You should feel a nice hamstring stretch on the way down and work in your hamstrings and glutes on the way up. Make sure you get all the way tall. Go through that full range of motion. Don't stop halfway. Keep going. Again, you can do this body weight if you don't have weights. All right, back down. We got one more set of those chest flies. I'm going to increase my weight for this round. So I'm just going up to seven pounds here. And let the weights fall to the side. Or control them as they go down to the sides. For added core challenge, you can lift your feet off the ground. Keep your back flat on the floor. Keep nice, steady, even breathing. Isn't that so nice about being on dry land versus in the pool? You can breathe whenever you want. All right, this is the last set of this group here. It's chest flies. So control the weights as they go down, control as they come back up. Keep that core engaged if you've got your feet up in the air. All right, that's it for this round. Going on to our next group of two exercises. So the next one is going to be a burpee and a Turkish getup. So the burpee, you can either come down, step back, and then come up into a streamline, or you can jump out, jump in, squat jump. So whatever combination works for you, 45 seconds is quite a long time. You're going to have a powerful jump, but also soft landings, softly land into a squat. And then come down for your next burpee. If you want to add even extra, you can do the push up. All right, next one is going to be a Turkish get up. So we'll do one side this round, then the other side next round. You're going to lay on your back. This arm is going to be above your shoulder. This leg is going to be bent. And then get up. So this arm is horizontally out. Keep your hand right above your shoulder. And just kind of roll onto your side. Push the weight straight up to the ceiling. This is a big shoulder stabilization workout, as well as some core strength. So I have my right hand with the weight above my right shoulder and my right knee is bent. So everything right sided. Push through your right heel, push yourself up. Okay, break. Remember which arm we use, we're using the other one for the next round, but we're gonna get back up to those burpees. You can do the step burpee, full burpee, full burpee with push up, up to you. So the squat, step back, step in, streamline, or jump back, jump in, streamline, or jump back, push up, jump in, streamline. So this is really important for those push-offs off the wall in a tight streamline. Soft landings. You don't want to hurt your knees or your ankles. So absorb the shock into your heels and into your hips as you land. Woo! Okay. 
We're going for that other side. So this time I'm going with the weight in my left hand. Lay on your back, left knee bent, right arm out, and just kind of push up. Wow, this side's harder for me. So you might have one side that's harder. That's okay. This is our last set for this group. Takes a lot of core strength, shoulder stability, and coordination to do this exercise correctly. So this is when I would start on a really light weight to begin with. I'm using 12 pounds. You probably want to start with more of like two pounds. All right. That is it for that set. We're gonna take a quick water break here. So grab a quick sip of water, keep your feet moving, get some active rest. Then we'll be back in for the next two rounds of two exercises. Okay, so the next two exercises, we're doing glute bridges and lat pullovers. They're going to be down here on the ground. The first one, lay on your back in a glute bridge. Squeeze your glutes. You want to activate your glutes first and keep your hamstrings pretty loose. Lower back, not too much activation there. Squeeze those hips towards the ceiling. To make it harder, you can put weight across your hips. That's one way to make it harder. Or you can do a single leg glute bridge. Try and keep your thighs parallel. So this leg shouldn't be up here. It should be parallel with your other thigh. Be straight. You can kind of do five on one side and then five on the other side and alternate back and forth. The next one is going to be a lat pullover. So grab your waist. Again, this should be pretty light. Start with the weights above your shoulders, palms facing down. Slowly lower them over your head as far as you can control. Come back up over your shoulder. This one, you want to start really light. I'm using 12 pounds, but again, you probably want to start with closer to two, maybe four or five pounds. If you haven't done this motion before, this is a very vulnerable position for your shoulder. Kind of lowering the weight over your head. Keep that core tight. Back flat on the ground. And if you feel your shoulder start to pop forward, you're using too much weight. So drop it, drop it down. But if you can imagine this is your, like your freestyle pull, pulling through the water. Okay, drop those. And we'll go back to the glute bridge. Take a little break here. So I think this time I'll do a combination of the single leg glute bridges. This is a good one for not having any weight. We'll start with five on this side. That's five. And then we'll switch. And remember, keep this lifted leg straight. Keep that quad engaged. Five. You want to keep your knee stable and hips level. Don't let them rotate and wobble all over the place. Then maybe I'll do some weighted ones too. Double leg. We'll finish it off with the weighted glute bridges here. So you have lots of options depending on what equipment you have at home. Okay, so back to those lat pullovers. And if you did too much weight last time, you need to drop it. Now's the time. This is our, we got one more set of the lat pullovers here. So draw those. Roll the blades down away from your ears. Control the motion. If you want a harder core challenge, again, you can lift your feet off the ground and really keep that back flat on the floor. These lat pullovers are targeting your lats. 
which is a really important muscle for swimmers because we use them a lot pulling through the water. Keep that back flat. Nice steady even breathing. All right, and give that a break. That's it for the exercise down the ground, so we're gonna hop back up to standing. So our last group here is gonna be lateral lunges and then ventral and lateral raises. So grab my weights, feet nice and wide, lunge back for that lateral lunge. As you lunge to the side, you want your knee tracking over your foot. You don't want it to be outside your foot or inside your foot. Push your hips straight back. You're trying to get your thigh parallel to the ground. You can rack the waist, frame your knee like I was, or hold them up here on your shoulders. Or again, if you have one weight, you can just hold it kind of in front of your chest. I like to frame my knee here. So these lateral lunges are really important for glute strength. Glutes are a super important muscle for swimmers. It's really important for powering that kick as well as kind of that side to side motion is really good for getting hip mobility for your breaststroke kick. So going to ventral lateral raises. So ventral up in front, lateral to the side. And you want to keep your thumbs up because if you have your palms facing down or facing back, it tends to close off your shoulder joint a little bit. And a lot of people have some shoulder impingement issues where that shoulder space gets kind of pinched. So we just want to avoid that as much as possible. So just keep those thumbs pointing up. To increase the challenge here, get a little more core. You can stand on one foot as you go back and forth between your ventral raise and your lateral raise. So just to shoulder height here. Okay, give that a break. Going back to that lateral lunge. So it should be from the side. But the goal is really to hinge those hips back into the lunge. So push those hips back. See how my knee is not coming forward in front of my toes. And you can use the weights as counterbalance as well. But push, push those hips back behind you, like you're sitting on a chair behind you. And again, this can be done body weight as well. And so here, this you'll probably feel a little bit of a stretch on the inner thigh. So it's a strengthening exercise and mobility exercise. Like I was saying earlier, you need good hip mobility for that breaststroke kick. So this is a good one to strengthen your glutes as well as open up that hip joint a little bit. All right. Little break here, going back to that ventral lateral raise. And so this one, uh, for the lateral lunges, I was using about 12 pounds each hand. This one I'm just using five pounds each hand. You're gonna go pretty light for this since your arms are straight. It's a long lever, so it gets pretty hard. This is a great one to use water bottles on. Depending on the size of the water bottle, a liter is about two pounds. Uh, if you have a gallon, that's eight pounds. So you can use household items to use for your weights. And you can see, standing on one leg here, just get a little extra core challenge. You can switch legs to, And you can also do like one cycle on one foot. And then one cycle on the other foot. All right, that was it for the strength portion. So we're gonna move on to our shoulder uh, burnout round. So before we do, go ahead and grab a quick sip of water, do a little bit of active rest, keep the feet moving, keep the arms moving, and we'll be right back. Okay, so the last exercise portion here is gonna be a shoulder stabilization burnout round. 
We have five exercises. We're going to go two rounds of this. It's going to be 30 seconds on and then five seconds to transition. It's a really quick burnout round here. Okay, so uh, you'll need one really lightweight, um, or you can also just do this body weight. Our first exercise is going to be shoulder 90 90 external rotation. So, two really light weights, bring your shoulders up to 90 degrees. And you're just going to open and close. Rotate your palms to face forwards and then down towards the ground. So, a couple things here. I'm doing this sitting because um, it really prevents you from using your body lean to get those weights up. You can also do this standing. You can do it on one foot for balance. Um, I'm just using about two pounds. You want to go really light. So the next one is going to be prone eyes. So on the ground, quick transitions here. Arms by your sides, shoulder blades, squeeze back. You can rest your forehead on the ground or on a towel. Shoulders away from ears. Squeeze your shoulder blades together. This is a burnout round. Okay, we're going to T's. So thumbs up, arms out to your sides. Shoulders away from ears. Squeeze those shoulder blades together. So the emphasis here is on squeezing your shoulder blades together instead of just swinging your arms up. And I'm starting to feel it in my shoulders. Hopefully you are too. You should feel it working between your shoulder blades. Okay, next one is W's. Start with your hands kind of above and then pull down. So pull your shoulder blades down like you're trying to put your shoulder blades in your opposite back pocket. Pull your shoulders away from your ears. It's like a horizontal pull up motion. You should really feel this between your shoulder blades and kind of underneath your shoulder blades. Okay, the next one is some plank shoulder taps. So get up in this plank. You can do knee plank or full foot plank. Try and keep your shoulders level and tap your arm to your opposite shoulder. So a little bit of core strength, also a little bit of shoulder stabilization here because you really have to work to keep your shoulders stable and keep that nice flat shoulder position or flat body position. Back to the shoulder external rotation. Weights. Quick transitions here. So 90 90, rotate up, rotate down. Don't let your shoulder really pop forward or kind of shrug up. Keep shoulders away from the ears and strengthen through your available range of motion. We got one more round of these five exercises here. Back down to the ground, the eyes, Keep from the side this time, the arms at the sides, squeeze those shoulder blades together. So you're really just trying to squeeze your shoulder blades together on your back. If this is really hard, you can kind of leave your hands on the ground, just do your shoulders, or hover your hands and squeeze your shoulders for a little bit more challenge. Quick break, arms out to the side, thumbs up. Shoulders away from ears, and squeeze the shoulder blades together. This is the burnout round. I definitely feel burn, hopefully you do too. This is trying to get your shoulders nice and strong and stable for pulling yourself through the water. Quick break, arms up above for those W's. 
have that horizontal pull up here. Pull those shoulder blades, squeeze them down away from your ears and slightly together on your back, like you're trying to stick them in your opposite back pockets. Really working on those shoulder stabilizer muscles and your scapular stabilizers here. Okay, last one is gonna be that plank shoulder tap. Come up into a full plank, or you can also do it from your knees if the full plank is a little too much, but try and keep your hips level and shoulders level as you do these shoulder taps in a plank position. Body position is everything in swimming, so working on our core muscles as well as shoulder stabilizers here to help you with that body position. All right. And now all we have left is the cool down. Okay, so you made it through the workout. Now all we have left is the cool down and stretch. So uh, we're gonna go through, it's just a six minute stretch here, 30 seconds each. So let's start it up. So the first one's gonna be an arm cross stretch. We'll go left first. Just draw your arm across your body, and you can kind of keep your feet moving slightly just to cool down from that workout. Deep breaths here. Swimmers do tend to be pretty flexible in general, um, so you don't need to do like a whole ton of stretching, but there are definitely some things you can do to increase your mobility if you have any mobility restrictions. Um, and it's also just a really nice recovery from that workout we just did. I'm gonna switch those arms. Nice deep breaths here. Especially if you're used to swimming, after doing a dry line workout, you might get pretty sore for a couple days. It's pretty normal. Soreness is uh, usually peaks around 24 to 72 hours after a workout, so don't be alarmed if you're really sore the next couple days. Um, but stretching and foam rolling are a couple things you can do for recovery to reduce that soreness. So go into a standing quad stretch, grab your ankle, Draw your heel towards your butt, keep your knees together, don't let them splay apart. Feel a nice stretch in the front of that thigh. That's your quad. Breathe nice and deep here. The quads did some good work today, so they deserve a stretch. Go ahead and switch sides here. It's also a little bit of balance work, so you get a little bonus here. Breathe into the stretch. Just feel that muscle release. Next one is going to be a forward bend hamstring stretch plus a behind the back chest stretch. So feet kind of wide, hinge forward at the hips, clasp your hands behind your back, stretch up. Open up that chest. You kind of rock one side to the other. You get more of one hamstring. Open up your chest here. Okay, the next one is a tricep hip flexor stretch. So one foot back, one foot forward. Tuck your hips under like a dog tucking its tail between its legs. Reach your elbow up and pull across for a tricep stretch. You should be stretching the hip flexor and your tricep on the same side of your body here. So lean over for a little bit deeper hip flexor and side stretch. Breathe into the stretch. So switch sides. Tuck those hips under, reach up. Pull that arm across for that tricep stretch. Breathe into the stretch here. Next one will come down to the ground. Figure four, stretch on your back. 
So cross your ankle over your opposite knee and pull your shin towards your chest. If you have to, you can grab behind your thigh, but if you can, pull in and flex your foot. Draw your toes of this foot towards your knee. You'll feel a better stretch in the hip that way. So breathe nice and deep here. Go ahead and switch sides. So cross the other ankle over your opposite knee. Flex that foot, draw your toes towards your knee and pull your shin towards you. Get a nice stretch in that hip. Next one is a supine twist. So draw one knee up and rotate it over to one side. You might have just heard my back crack there, but it is pretty common. Um, as long as cracks don't hurt, we generally don't worry about them. So, so oftentimes they actually feel pretty good. So this is just a nice torso stretch here. And then switch sides, so bring your knee to your chest, rotate to the other side. I just heard my back pop again. Usually it's nice to get on both sides. This is also a nice chest stretch here. Breathe into that stretch. Okay, the last one's gonna be a frog stretch. So you get your shins parallel to each other. 90 degree angle bend at the knee. Just kind of push back into the stretch. It's called a frog adductor stretch, or at least that's what I call it. This is a really good one for opening up those hips. Um, a lot of people have some hip mobility restrictions, so they're not very good at breaststroke kick. So this is a good one for opening up those hips for breaststroke. So you can push your knees out to the side, rock back a little farther into it. I like this stretch, so we're just going to stay here a little longer. You can kind of come out of it and then back into the stretch. Breathe into those hips. And then bring our heels in. And kind of release out of that stretch. And that is it. You just completed a total body strength workout with a little bit of a shoulder stabilization burnout. Hopefully that was a helpful dry land workout for you swimmers, and also even for any athletes out there, you can benefit from this workout here. So, hope you enjoy that, hope you feel faster and stronger in the pool, and thanks for joining me. I'll see you next time.